What is up, ladies and gentle nerds? It is Graham, also known as HamHawks42, and I'm here with another edition of Overthinking MTG, the show where I look at a magic card and explain why I've been spending way too much of my mental cycles uh, thinking about magic cards, uh, at least for 10 minutes. So we'll see. All right, so we're on the Gatherer website. Let's go ahead and click Random Card, everybody's favorite button. And the card that we landed on today was Famine. And specifically, we're looking at a printing. Oh, interesting. This printing is actually from Portal Three Kingdoms. Um, and if you're not familiar with Portal, it is an older set. Uh, it's an older white-bordered set that had a number of different um, facets. And Three Kingdoms specifically was one that is less... You, you don't see it that much these days. It's... Um, well, obviously you don't see it that much these days. It's an older set. But it, it's... Cards from it were very unique, and also you'll find that a lot of cards from it are actually rather expensive because they were only printed once in a lot of cases. The vast majority of them have not been reprinted. And on top of that, um, they were geared towards, um, as I understand it, they were very focused on the Asian flavor. That's what they were going for. If you look at the the set symbol, it actually looks almost like... Um, some kind of kanji symbol. Uh, I do not claim to know what the heck I'm talking about on that front. So, you know, don't ask me what that actually means. If it means anything, I have no clue. Um, all right, so Famine is a sorcery that is three generic, two black. So converted mana costs five. And so the, let's see, let's look at the Oracle text first. That's what I tend, tend to do here. So it's a sorcery for five. Famine deals three damage to each creature and each player. And that's it. That's all it does. Okay, so it's a it's a sorcery that just does three damage, just poof, to absolutely everything. And let's, the the text that was printed on the card, famine deals three damage to each creature and player. Uh, okay, simple enough. And it actually includes reminder text that says, this includes your creatures and you. So, you know, that's something that's fairly evident when it says each, so each creature's each player, you, your creatures are creatures. You are a player. It all counts. Yep, it, you're, it just hits absolutely everybody. And then the flavor text on it is, But it was a year of dearth. People were reduced to eating leaves of jujube trees. Corpses were seen everywhere in the countryside. All right, that's chilling, I gotta say. Uh, and the image definitely serves that because the picture is a very gaunt individual um, who is actually stripping the bark off of a tree and put and clearly eating it. Um, yikes! And and he's actually he's this particular. Uh, person is not wearing a shirt. He's just wearing some some ratty slacks or some ratty trousers. Uh, yeah, and he's clearly just peeling off bark off of a tree and chewing on it. Um, and in the background, you see just a desolate landscape. It is just barren and you know tan. Um, there are some gray clouds in the sky, but there's clearly hasn't been any rain in this particular area for a very long time. And uh, there is actually another figure in the foreground that is on the ground um, kind of sitting up almost. Looks like they may be just too weak to stand. Um, yeah, so I got to say, flavorfully, they nailed it. This is definitely, you know, top to bottom, I can see what's going on here. The imagery of being reduced. So in, the flavor text refers to eating leaves off jujube trees. Uh, but in this case, in the image, the tree actually doesn't even have any leaves on it. The tree is completely barren. And this person is, uh, yeah, is actually peeling off the bark. Yikes! That is, that's really evocative. Um, and also the fact that he doesn't have a shirt on, you can see that he has almost no muscle and clearly no fat on his bones. You can see his ribs, uh, even from behind. Yikes! I gotta say, um, this is a very well done card from a flavor perspective. They got it all right. Um, now from the actual gameplay. Okay, so this is all creepy. Uh, it's everything a black card ought to be, where it kind of makes you just go, Ugh. and it, I'd say it nails that. Actually, I'm, I'm, I find myself just gravitating back to the image of this person because it's really striking. Um, and the illustration was by uh, Sun Nan, Sunan, uh, Sunan, something like Anyway, well done. 
uh, I gotta say, just top to bottom, beautiful illustration. Now the card itself. So we've got five, we, we have um, a converted mana cost of five for sorcery that deals three damage to each creature and each player. So it is effectively a black board wipe. That's what we're seeing here. And it can hit, abs it can kill everything with toughness three or less. So, okay, it's a way of clearing out weenies and it, the fact that it deals three damage to each player is an opportunity to possibly put somebody over the edge or if you're in a situation where you're forcing your opponent to lose a lot of life especially re repeatedly then you have some options or this this is one way to kind of make them pay for that um there's also a couple other implications uh, around this uh one one of my favorite cards from back in the day i actually had a deck built around a card called pestilence and that's a similar uh, th this is kind of in that same vein. The way that Pestilence worked was it was an enchantment that only cost two to put down. Or two, four. I think it cost four to put down. Anyway, once it's on the battlefield, you could pay one black mana and deal one damage to all creatures and all players. And so it was very similar to this type of effect, but this is a one-time hit for three, all coming from a single source. Pestilence, uh, each one damage was its own source. But you can only spend black mana on it. Um, and then the other caveat with Pestilence was if there are no creatures on the board, you have to sacrifice it. So if there are no creatures alive, then it's got to go. Well, I had a thing that I'd like to that I like to do with that deck where I comboed Pestilence with Death Pits of Wrath, which is an enchantment for five that says if damage would be dealt to a creature, kill that creature, or you know that creature is destroyed. So. It just basically turns Pestilence into just pay one, kill everything. And that was really great. And so what I did was I actually comboed that with um, Circle of Protection Black and a bunch of white creatures that had protection from black. So I would throw Death Speakers and I believe it was White Knight. It was White Knight or Silver Knight, one of those. I think it was White Knight. So I'd have these little creatures that had protection from black, and then I would get that combo online on turn five, and then all of a sudden, whenever my opponents tried to play a creature, I would just pay one and kill it, and kill all of them. And so I actually locked down a couple of... Uh, that was kind of my first take on... Uh, it wasn't truly stacks, uh, which is an archetype where the whole focus is to prevent your friends from playing the game, basically. But it was similar to that. I was able to lock down a field very efficiently. And, you know, so I got into a couple of four or five, six person multiplayer games where I got that online and people got really pissed at me because they just uh, they didn't have any creatures that would stick. And so. It was pretty effective, and especially back in the day, we were playing back in like Scourge and Mirrodin, and a lot of the decks that we were running were creature-based. You know, the, the spell slinger type um, at least wasn't alive and well in my play group. You know, it may have existed, and it's gotten a lot more toys since then, but that definitely wasn't a style at the time. So anyway, this would have fit very nicely in that deck because one of the challenges with that deck was. Um, the circle of protection black that would prevent the damage to me that pestilence was dealing which that way i could we you know i can drive my opponent's health totals down each time i wiped the board um but then i would use this circle of protection black to protect myself from it that was handy however the problem was i had to pay one white mana every single time i wanted to prevent the damage to myself i just say white just because that's what i had available and i couldn't put it into pestilence so you know, I would pay one, I would basically tap two mana, wipe the board, and deal one damage to everybody but me. Well, Famine here would give me an opportunity. I could pay five, throw it out, and pay one, and prevent all three damage to me. Meanwhile, I'm hitting all of my opponents and all the creatures on the board. So, uh, that's something. Plus, additionally, if I get this down on turn five, I don't even... There's a very real possibility, depending on the decks I'm going up against, that even if I don't have Death Pits available to me, I can still drop this and wipe the board because it deals three damage instead of just one. So there's that. You know, there's there's something here. It's not amazing, but it's it, there. There's a place when where this could be effective. Um, yeah, I'm sure there. Are, you know, if I were to try to build a commander variant of that old Pestilence deck, you better believe I would have one of these in there because I just need any kind of recursion on that theme. Um, and yeah, whenever you're in a situation with Commander where you where you can only have one of any given card, uh, if that card is on your theme, especially part of a 
combo, redundancy is key. You just need that. And so this is an opportunity. If I'm in a situation where pestilence is useful, this is redundancy. Also see crypt rats. Anyway, this is, you know, it's interesting stuff. Um, the, the card, the flavor of the card is just excellent. Uh, there's a place for it. You know, this isn't a competitive piece. Given that it was printed in Portal Three Kingdoms, I suspect there aren't that many copies of it floating around and also there are more mana efficient ways of doing this these days um you know the the one comparison that comes to mind right off the bat one that actually just came out in theros beyond death recently as i'm recording this is storm's wrath which is a card that deals four damage to all creatures and planeswalkers now the and it only costs four mana the main difference is that's red and dealing damage to things is very red clearly so there's not you know it's you know maybe it's an unfair comparison because this is a this is in black but black also has access to other board wipes that would be more effective than this you know it has access to decree of annihilation it has access to damnation um and a, a number of others so you know depending on what you're trying to accomplish there are better ways to do it that said if you want to make a commander deck full of cards that are super creepy and just kind of give you the willies, then this is dead on. I can't think of a, a, a better option for that. Uh, so yeah, if you have a Hirobi Death's Whisper deck that's all about just creepy stuff, there you go. I don't know why Hirobi was the one that came to mind. I'm sure there are creepier commanders out there. Anyway, guys, this has been a load of fun. I really appreciate it, as always. And, uh, yeah, this is available wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. And I also stream over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash hamhocks42. I am there every morning, 530 to 630, and I will see you there. Thanks so much. Catch you next time.